Paris is hosting the next Summer 2024 Olympic Games. With over 15 million expected visitors over just a two-week period, it could become the single largest event ever held in the country. From beach volleyball at the foot of the Eiffel Tower to horseback riding in the gardens of Versailles, Paris is getting ready to show off their cultural wealth to the entire world. But until then, the city still has a lot of work to do, and many are wondering if everything will be ready in time. I'm Regis, and today we'll look at Paris's insane Olympic preparations, the challenges it faces, and the impact the event will have. The Bid in 2017, Paris was competing with Hamburg, Budapest, Rome, and Los Angeles for the opportunity to host the 2024 Olympics. However, following a public referendum, Hamburg withdrew from the process and was soon followed by Rome, which faced financial difficulties. After a successful petition against the candidacy, Budapest also withdrew, leaving only Paris and Los Angeles as candidates. The two cities were then supposed to reach an agreement on which would become the host in 2024 and which in 2028. While Paris was prepared to push strongly against waiting another four years, Los Angeles was more open to the idea. This resulted in an agreement in which Los Angeles will host the 2028 games, while the 2024 games will be held in Paris. Paris 24, Los Angeles 28. However, this is not the city's first time as a host. That was actually way back in 1900, when it hosted the second ever modern Olympics and allowed women to participate for the first time. The second time was exactly 100 years ago, when the Athletes' Village was first introduced, which has since become a major tradition. This time around, they're set to achieve multiple firsts yet again. They'll be the first games in history to feature gender-equal athlete selection, as well as the first to be completely carbon-neutral and to include a breakdancing discipline. Not only that, but with a budget of $9.5 billion, they're intended to be one of the cheapest of the century. A little counterintuitive, but we'll explain how. While this budget has already exceeded the initial estimates by more than $2 billion, it's allegedly still under control. This is evident when compared to the previous game. For example, the 2012 London Olympics required over 6,000 budget modifications, increasing the initial cost of $3 billion to $11 billion. The current budget, on the other hand, is much more stable, having only required about 300 modifications so far. The Venues one of the reasons for this stable budget could be Paris's unique approach to selecting venues for the event. Almost all of the sporting events will take place in either existing arenas or temporary arenas set up in various locations. This strategy largely avoids unnecessary construction projects, which is also consistent with the vision of carbon neutrality. At the same time, it will allow the city to show the world its most beautiful places. And this is Paris, so there's quite a few of them. This will be most visible in central Paris, where both famous arenas and iconic sites will be used. On one hand, the Parc des Princes Stadium and the Stade Roland Garros will host sports like football, boxing, and tennis. On the other hand, several temporary arenas will be set up throughout the city center's historical sites. Let's take a look at some of the most interesting ones. Firstly, the fencing and taekwondo competitions will be held at the Grand Palais. It's a historical site and museum complex that dates back to 1900 and has previously hosted the World Fencing Championships, moving to the Les Invalides complex, which will hold the archery and athletics events in its open outdoor space. It's known for its military history museums, as well as Napoleon Bonaparte's tomb. Next, the most iconic of all Parisian sites, the Eiffel Tower. At its foot, a temporary arena will be set up for beach volleyball. And just a short walk away, the gardens of the Trocadero will take center stage for the opening ceremony. In addition, famous squares such as La Concorde will be used as open venues, and even some historical bridges will be incorporated into events like cycling and the triathlon. As we move further from the city center into the surrounding Ile-de-France region, we'll also be met with many impressive venues. The colossal Stade de France will host the rugby and athletics, as well as the closing ceremony. The Palace of Versailles, one of the most famous sites in the whole of France, will be used as a temporary arena. Or more specifically, its famous gardens, where the equestrian and modern pentathlon will be held. North of the city center, we can even find two brand new permanent venues. The first is the Porte de la Chapelle Arena, which has been under construction since 2020. While it was originally supposed to host the basketball event, its 8,000-person capacity will instead be used for badminton and gymnastics. 
The other one is the Paris Aquatic Center, which began construction in 2017 and will be used for diving, water polo, and artistic swimming. It will have a capacity of 6,000 people during the Olympics, but it'll be reduced to around 2,000 afterwards. Moving on from Paris, let's take a short look at the other venues scattered across the country. Several flagship cities of French football, such as Lyon, Nice, and Marseille, will host the football competitions, as they already have massive stadiums built. For example, both the Marseille Stadium with its impressive roof, or the ultra-modern Lyon Stadium will be used. Speaking of Marseille, the sailing events will be held at the city's marina, which is well known for hosting boat-related activities. Finally, there's one venue that's just completely unique from all of the others. That's because it's located on the opposite side of the globe, on the island of Tahiti. Since it's part of French Polynesia, it technically counts as part of French territory. This means that the organizers will be able to host a surfing event on the amazing local waves. As you can see, the vast majority of the venues will be ready for use with only minor modifications. However, in preparation for the other aspects of the Olympics, Paris is working on a few absolutely massive projects. The new Olympic Village is by far the largest one. When this tradition first began in 1924, Paris only prepared a number of temporary wooden huts to house the athletes. As it proved to be a practical solution, which also brought athletes together, other cities continued with the idea, and the concept evolved significantly over the years. So unlike last time, Paris is taking a much different approach this time around. Instead of building a temporary settlement that would only serve the event, a massive urban development project has been launched. The new village will cover an area of 70 soccer fields, mostly in Saint-Denis, just north of central Paris. It will be able to accommodate all 14,000 Olympic athletes, allow them to be only 30 minutes away from the majority of the venues, and provide them with all of the necessary facilities. However, there's another specific reason for selecting Saint-Denis as the location. For a long time, this part of the city had quite an infamous reputation, mainly due to high crime rates and socioeconomic issues. The long-term goal of the village is to actually improve this situation and benefit the local citizens. After the Olympics, it'll be repurposed for residential use, offering spaces for 6,000 people and reshaping the area for the better. It was scheduled to be finished in late 2023, but there's been no update on its current status so far. Another massive project that's currently underway involves the Seine, the city's main river. But before we talk about that, we'd really appreciate your feedback in the comments down below. If you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe to Top Luxury to not miss any future videos. But now, back to the River Seine, which is supposed to play a major role in the opening ceremony, with a giant boat parade and spectators watching from both banks. In addition, it's also expected to host the swimming marathon and a portion of the triathlon event just like it did way back in the 1900 Olympics. However, due to rising pollution, swimming in the river has actually been banned since 1923. The primary cause of this problem is untreated wastewater, of which 1.9 million cubic meters were discharged in 2022, equivalent to 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. While this is 90% less than it was 20 years ago, the amount of bacteria it produces still makes swimming unsafe. Paris has a very, very old combined sewer system that collects both wastewater from homes and factories and rainwater from the streets. As a result, during heavy rains, it can easily become saturated, resulting in floods. In such cases, much of the wastewater needs to be dumped directly into the river to avoid overloading the network, instead of being handled properly. So how the heck do the organizers intend to fix this issue so that people can swim in the river? The answer is a colossal underground rainwater tank located near the Austerlitz train station. Its job will be to collect polluted rainwater from the streets and transport it to a treatment plant downstream. When the bacteria levels reach the safety thresholds, it will be released into the Seine. This way, the rainwater tank will significantly offload the sewer system, allowing the wastewater to enter the network properly rather than being discharged into the river untreated. But despite the $1.5 billion price tag, the project is not guaranteed to succeed. While it should work under normal conditions, if the city experiences excessively heavy rain during the event, it may not be sufficient. If this were to happen, the swimming competitions may be postponed for a few days as the organizers don't have a backup plan. Let's just hope the weather's on our side, I guess. 
Anyway, river pollution is not the only issue that could arise during the games. Paris also faces two other major problems, both of which have the potential to seriously disrupt the entire Olympics. The first and most important is security, or more specifically, potential terrorism. Although the country has been on guard against terrorism since the famous 2015 attacks, this event will be unlike any other in the past given its massive scale. The total number of visitors is expected to be around 15.3 million, with 600,000 attending just the opening ceremony. To put this into perspective, Paris currently has a total population of 2.2 million people. To ensure security, approximately 20,000 agents will be present every day. Furthermore, 30,000 additional police officers and soldiers will be mobilized on the first day. The traffic will also be severely restricted, as you might imagine, with some metro stations closing for the whole duration and the airports being shut down on the day of the opening ceremony. This leads us to the second major issue, infrastructure. There are concerns about how the city's traffic will handle such a large influx of people, especially given that public transportation is already struggling during rush hours even now. During the city's candidacy, authorities were counting on the Great Paris Express to prevent serious congestion. It's a giant project to modernize the city's transportation network with new metro lines. We've covered this project in the past, so if you want to learn more about it, click the icon in the top right corner. Long story short, the majority of the project will not be completed on time due to numerous delays during construction. Only the new extensions to the already existing Line 14 will be finished in time for the event. The authorities now expect people to use alternative means of transport in addition to public transportation, such as walking and cycling. For this reason, new bicycles and cycling lanes were installed in advance. To be honest, this doesn't sound like the best plan in my opinion, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. So given all of this information, just how successful will the event be? Despite all of the issues, preparations have been relatively smooth in comparison to the other Olympics in the past. This is primarily because the city is already quite accustomed to tourism as one of the most visited places in the entire world. The long-term impact will be mostly positive as well. Even though the Olympics are a one-time event, the effect will be long-lasting thanks to the future-oriented focus of the projects for this year's games. Then, of course, there's the pure, raw financial benefit it'll bring. While the public contribution to the funding is approximately $2.6 billion of the $9.5 billion budget, the expected generated revenue is roughly $11.7 billion. Even after accounting for any potential taxation or additional costs, this is a substantial amount of money. Finally, there's the cultural benefit of sharing the city's cultural wealth with the rest of the world while bringing so many people together for a common purpose, to watch the Olympics. So what are your thoughts? Do you like the approach Paris is taking in preparation? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more about similar projects, you should watch our video about the biggest stadiums under construction. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.